with solving equations, there's really only three main ideas in terms of steps for solving these simple equations. The first one is to simplify. And what I mean by simplify is if there's any fractions, get rid of fractions. If there's any parentheses, get rid of parentheses. Just make it just stuff. Okay? Get rid of it, make it as simple as it, as it, as it can be, and we'll see that. Uh, the next one is to isolate. And we'll, we'll see it again. It means to take the numbers and put them on one side, and take the letters and put them on the other side. Isolate it. Isolate the variable. Okay. And then the last one I just call solve. And that's if, and, you know, it's, you, I have to multiply or divide right number to get the thing totally by itself so it's singular. So this is like simplifies parentheses. Fractions, fractions, go off the word there. Uh, isolate would be addition or subtraction, and solve is going to be multiplication or division. There are times you can deviate from that order, but that order really will work with, with every kind of problem. Okay, uh, six times the cube of a number. Six times, what does cube mean? Three. What do you mean? The little three above the exponent. It's called oh, exponent. It is an exponent. The exponent is here. So I'll just put six x cubed, cube of a number. Okay, the, the x, the number is cubed, not the six. Six times the cube of a number. The square of a number decreased by the product of five and the same number. The square of a number decreased by the product of product mean. Well, five times the same number. A number, the square of a number decreased by the product of five times the same number. Five and the same number. Oh yeah, a lot of words to say things that are silly. Uh, represent twice the difference of a number in six. Twice the difference means that I'm going to multiply with parentheses because I'm going to multiply the difference. What does difference mean? Subtraction. Subtraction. And the best way to say it, the, I think the official rule is if they say the difference of, you take the first one they say and subtract the second one. Because it's not exactly that clear necessarily in the language. So, the difference of a number in six, difference of a number six, twice that difference. Okay? Okay, so name the property illustrated by the statement, if xy equals 28 and x equals 7, then 7y equals 28. What's the property that says I can replace something with what it equals? Substitution. Substitution. To replace, to substitute. Okay? We call it a substitute teacher because it's a replacement teacher. Oh. Ah. <laughs> so 7 replaces x in the equation. There's actually more, but I'm going to stop with these. These are the primary ones. Reflexive just means that something equals itself, a mirror image. It, it equals itself. Symmetric is a silly one. What does symmetry mean? Same. Same on both sides, which means if A equals 2, then 2 equals A. Yeah. Like, oh, wow, that's really complicated. The last one, though, is a little bit more tricky. It's kind of like substitution, but subtly different. This one says if A equals B and B equals C, A equals B, B equals C, then, and then A equals C. It's a specific order. It's, it's like substitution in a way in that, hey, I'm going to put C where B was. It could be substitution. I mean, you could consider it substitution. But it's a specific kind where you can sort of go, uh, you have two equations and they go through each other. A to B, B to C, so A goes to C. And transitive means to go through. So this one is already simplified. There's no, well, actually, well, I'm talking about when it's like really complicated. Never mind. We'll get to something like that. 
It's already isolated, the T is by itself. Okay, I mean there's a, a number in front of it, but it's not like being added or subtracted. That's what I mean by isolate. So the last thing is to multiply or divide. How do I get rid of a fraction? Multiply by what, what, what word did I forbid you using last lesson that you can now use this lesson? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. Okay. So I can multiply this by 2 over 1, which is just 2. I got to do it to both sides, right? So that, um, I just have T. 36. T is 36. Okay, so the first step is uh, to simplify, get rid of the parentheses. So in this case, it means to distribute. Okay, so I got 53 equals 3y minus 6. Okay, be careful on this because you're multiplying by negative 2. So, minus 6y. Minus 6y. Minus 2. Plus 2, plus 2, I changed my mind. Okay? And also by simplify, I also mean condense, right? If you could put things together on the same side, do that before you do the next step. Condense as well. So 53 equals 3y, negative 6y. Negative 3y. Okay, negative 6, positive 2. Minus 4. Minus 4. Okay, now we're on to the next step, which is isolate. That means I need to get the letter by itself. Here's the letter. What's tagging along with it? 4. The minus 4. So I'm going to throw it over there. It's going to be a plus 4. 57. 57 equals negative 3. So negative 3 times. How do I get rid of times? Divide. Negative three, negative three. What's it, fifty-seven divided by negative three? Oh, I don't know. It's negative. Just tell us. Yeah. Fine. Anyway. It's nineteen. Oh, I guess that. Oh. Well. Hey, what's sixty divided by three? Twenty. Twenty. See, you got that quick. Fifty-seven. Oh. <laughs> oh, I get three less. <laughs> All right, here we go. A equals <laughs> one half. B one plus B two. H. They want you to solve for h, which means get it, get it by itself. And here's the thing that I see. I see it's one half times something times h. Right? Just in parentheses, it's still one number. There might be two things inside, but it still represents only one number, right? So if I have one half times times, how do I get rid of times? Divide. Divide. So I'm going to divide. This is going to freak some of you out. Divide by one half b1 plus b2. H. No, because I want the H no, by itself. It's so I'm going to do that over here. 1 half B1 plus B2. So I now have H is equal to A over 1 half B1 plus B2. And this is the part that's going to freak some of you out. I got a 1 half on the bottom. I don't want a fraction in a fraction. So I'm going to give you a shortcut and then I'm going to explain it. If you have the fraction on the bottom of the fraction, put it on the top and flip it over. Uh, that's I'll give you some examples here. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Can you say that again? Alright. I'm going to give you several examples here. Okay. 7 over Wait, what? 1 fifth. Or uh, 3 halves over 1 third. Or uh, we'll even mix, mix it up here. Um, one third over five. So the fraction's just on the top. Do negative. I don't know. Yes. There you go. How about do? Okay. Now number one, if you if you're really freaked out, write the problem like this: seven divided by one fifth, and then everyone's like, "Oh, I know what to do now." Flip over the second one and multiply. Okay. This kind of works. He died. Oh. No, boo. Boo. Okay. Hey, I would absolutely never use this in the real world. Actually, let me say it better. Let me say it better. If you have a fraction under a fraction, take the very bottom of the bottom of the fraction in the bottom and put it to the top. I think it's the most retarded thing in the world.